pause. I mean, I think next year is going to be a year of probably greater liquidity. The problem right now is that the fixed income markets, which provide a lot of collateral for credit providers, uh, are misbehaving quite badly. So yields pushing up, the value of collateral is consequently going down. In other words, the value of bonds that are uh, that are posted against uh, loans are going down in value, which means that the ability to borrow against that is uh, is compromised. And as a result of that, liquidity is not uh, you know coming through in the way that uh, maybe it had done uh, six months earlier. Now, this is not to say that central banks are reducing liquidity. They're not. Um, the Federal Reserve at least is sort of inching uh, its liquidity injections up. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's pouring liquidity into the system. That clearly isn't true. But it's flatlining its liquidity injections. It's trying to support uh, the US banking system with cash. But more importantly, if you look at China, which is the other key player uh, in the system, China is going for it. It's pushing a lot of liquidity into markets. Uh, in the period uh, since the, uh, uh, the early October uh, week holiday in China, the sort of golden week period, as it was called, uh, the authorities have actually come back and pushed a lot more cash uh, back into markets. There was a big injection before the holiday, but it's basically persisted. And it seems that this is a, a clear and deliberate policy change by China now. Uh, and you've got to look at what the People's Bank is doing in terms of its liquidity thrust that's going ahead. It's not about interest rates in China. It never has been. It's all about the flow of liquidity.